Good evening, everybody. Thank you for coming. <clears throat> and I would like to draw your attention tonight. First of all, the shir should be as chus for a full shleima for my sister Miriam Bas Ina Pesi Echav the Sechsha Chol Yisrael, and Ilin Neshama for the Elbas and Bas Ephraim, and for a uh, holy Jew, a big Talmud Chacham, a big Torah scholar, who passed away last night. Um, Rabbi Noble, someone who I knew personally, who was privileged to observe and to watch Davin Nirim in Yeshiva. And I think it's very appropriate that we're going to be talking about Berchas Atayra today, because that was all he was about. He was all about, um, I think he worked for the Social Security, but he was his main, everything in his life was learning Torah and being attached to Torah. Um, so that's tonight what we're going to discuss as we learn about Berchas Atayra, the blessing that we make on the Torah every single day. The Torah is not just, it's much more than academics. It's not, it's, you know, it's not just another um, topic or something like that. It's something alive. But before that, we're going to go into um, the bracha of Elikai Nisham. Now first, it's important to mention that and you, you have this in a few places that we, being that we're used to saying a certain thing, many times it comes out wrong. A very common example of that is when we say Shema. So we say Ve'ahavta. The proper way to say that would be Ve'ahavta. Because sometimes when we, the different, um, when we pronounce different letters, it means, it can mean some, it could change the meaning of the word. The difference between Ra'afta and Ra'afta is past and present. Ra'afta means I loved. It could, it could sound that way. Ra'afta is present and future. Um, this was a, a, a amusing one in Hamalach HaGoyl, so in the brachas that, which is part, it's a part of what we say also at night before my creation, before we go to sleep. So definitely as children, there's a beautiful like a lullaby tune for it. You're familiar with it. And there's part of what, this is a bracha that Yaakov Avinu gave to to Ephraim and Manasseh. And he told them, You shall multiply like fish. Was, uh, either Frank Menashe or by, he, when he's, by the maybe when the, 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 all the Shvatim were there, I don't remember exactly. Pashas Vayichi is where it's brought down. Um, so there's a word Vayid Gularoif. Vayid Gu comes from the word that has in, in the word Dag. You know, you shall multiply like fish. Somehow, somewhere from Vayid Gu became Vayid Gu, and then it means, I don't know what it means. So many times we, we, when we get when we, the, and there is such a concept uh, in halacha. For example, when we begin to say Masha for Ruach Omer Dageshem or any thing that we switch in davening, we say the same Talumot or the same Bracha in the summer and in the winter. Right? So how do we? How do? How does one? Uh, these things, if if uh, one doesn't say them or mixes them up, one has to daven again. How do you? If you're not, sh- and in a case where you're not sure, how do you know to determine that you said or you didn't say? After 30 days, meaning after saying it 30 days, three times a day, after saying it for 90 times, your tongue gets used to saying a certain word, and you can assume that that's, that's what you said. That there's a... Um, so, many, so that goes for that, and it goes for the fact, you know, that many times we say things and we get used to saying them wrong, and we don't even realize. So one of these is, is this bracha of Alekai Neshama. How does it, how do, how do many people automatically without thinking say it, Alekai Nesham? And that's how they call the bracha, Alekai Nesham. So what is that supposed to mean? Alekai Nesham, my God is my soul, is my soul? That doesn't make sense. And that's not, what are we saying, what are we, what are we saying in the bracha? Sounds like you wanted to say something. So that's Alekai Nesham, what should I thought of me? It's Elikai, comma, Nishamash and Asatabi, Tahirahi. 
we're talking to Hashem. That's from, from mantra to conversation, the title of this series. A ritual to relationship. It's not just, we're just saying, we're talking. Right? It's, we're, saying, we're standing and we're saying, Elikai, Hashem, my God. I'm the claim, Nishama Shanasati, I realize the soul that you gave me, Tahori, is pure. It's pure, it's perfect. No. Who created it? Of course it's perfect. You created it? Atta Verasa. Atta Yitzarta. You created it, you designed it. Atta Nefachtabi. You breathed it into me. Atta Meshamra Bekirbi. And you keep it inside of me. And there will come a day when you will take it away from me and bring it back to its place. Something that we have to face and be prepared for, not in a negative way. Part of life. And you will bring, give it back to me with the resurrection of the dead. And now we declare, Kolzman Shamashama Bikirbi. Every second of the Nishama is in my is in my uh, inside of me. Moidani Lafanecha. I praise you because I moida I admit and I realize that everything is coming from you. Hashem Alaikai, Velaika Vesai, Hashem, the God of my fathers and forefathers. My God, the God of my forefathers. Ribon Kalamasim, the master of everything, the master of all, a master of all. Adoin Kalam Neshamais, and here you are in charge of all the souls as well. Baruch Atah Hashem, blessed are you Hashem, HaMachazer Neshamais. You, he who brings back the souls, Lifgarim Mesim, to dead corpses. Right? When we're sleeping, we're practically not here. Some more than others, some less than others, depending on the level of slumber. But tell you right, when someone falls asleep, it's the 60th of death. Right? And the Shama goes up every night. And more than that, you took right, a, a body, which is just from the dust of the earth, and you gave it in the Shama, you gave it life. That's what, that is the soul. When we see with our eyes, it's not the physical eyes, it's the Neshama that gives it that power to see. Right? You see sometimes, some people, um, People pass away. It's not always with. Sometimes you need to close the eyes. The eyes are open. Are they looking at you? No. The guy's not there. His body's there. He's not there no more. Um, he or she. So that just in terms of the way we say it, it's important always to, you know, not to, not to get into a routine to try, you know. To say it, say it from inside. It becomes sometimes like a, like I don't know what, like a bunch of words that we just say. And it loses any semblance of, of life. And it's up to us to make it a, a, make it alive every day. So again, just to clarify, like, to be careful. And it's, in this case, it could, it could sound funny. When we say like, neshama, first it doesn't make sense. Like, neshama, so one second, who gave it to you? So, uh, and also, doesn't it sounds wrong because of I mean, we're talking to Hashem? Hashem is our God, not our soul is our God. Hashem gave us our soul, so we declare like again, like I, I'm talking to you, Hashem, now, and I'm telling you something very important. I may have mentioned it over here in this year, or in a different one. If I did, it's definitely worth it to hear again. My father said this story over before Nigila this year. The Chofetz Chaim, of blessed memory, one time he put out a, a message in Raden, in his city, in his home city. He has a very important message. Again, the Chofetz Chaim was the leader of the generation. He, he, everyone hung on to his every word. He said he has a very important message for the people of the town. Everyone should come to his house at 3 o'clock in the morning. Middle of the night. Three o'clock in the morning, you can imagine. Oh, it's time. What does he want to tell us? You know, there was a, by three o'clock a.m. There was no place. There was like during the day. There was no place. And not inside, not outside. 
everyone was trying to hear. Now, I'm not, I don't think there were microphones there. Probably they would, they would be passed out. I'm, I'm not sure. I wasn't there. I don't know how they arranged it. But this is what happened. This is a story that happened. Everyone was waiting, waiting, waiting. They're waiting for the Chavetz Chaim to come and to, to begin saying this groundbreaking message. Hey, who knows what, what he's going to say. Chavetz Chaim take out a siddur. And he starts saying this tefillah. Halakai. I realized that this you gave me a soul, you gave me a gift, you gave me a soul for a purpose. It's pure. Pure beyond. Because why? Because it's from you. Atavarasa, you uh, you created Ati and he went through word by word and translating it and explaining it. And people have to think. What's he saying? This is what he wanted to tell us. So he said over this is Akadosh Baruch Hu gave us a soul, he gives us a soul that's pure. It's up to us to make sure not to get it dirty. It had an effect. My father said it over this year before the Ila, and he ended off. We had, we're coming after Hol Yom Kippur. Right, we cleaned, we, we did tshuva, and we cleaned ourselves up. And now we're going out after Yom Kippur, right? After Neila. Make sure not to keep it clean. We get a, not to get used to it. Not to stop appreciating what it is that we have. That's just a, a story that inspires me about this tefillah. Maybe it inspires some others. It's very true. It's very, it's very simple. Hashem gave us the neshama. Hashem gives, gives, giving us everything. He created. He took care. You know, it comes to mind. What does this seem like? Um, you know, someone comes to a, you get a job in a new company where you becomes a student in this huge, huge university, and the dean or the CEO, you know, instead of coming, gives him personal attention. Gives him that personal, takes him through it all, you know, red tape, yellow tape, he, all the bureaucracy, he takes, him, he takes him through everything. And he really holds his hand and helps him ra ra raise himself up and higher and higher and higher. How would that person feel? That person would feel tremendous. He'd feel, first of all, he would feel very good. He would feel tremendously honored. And he would feel that he has that responsi a responsibility to the one that, that, uh, that gave him, that gave his all to him. Here, Kaddish Baruch created an entire world. He created us. He gave us a special nisham, a special soul, pure, beautiful, everything. We say this every single morning to remind us, you're starting off our, we're starting off our day. What are we, how are we going to do this? How are, we, how are we going to go about our day? We're going to go about our day in a way that's befitting us. And we'll show proper appreciation for this monumental event that HaKadosh Baruch Hu gave us, this, gave us our nisham, and, and, our, and which is so lofty and so tremendous. The choice is ours to make. We have a mitzvah to choose well. To choose well and to make the most of every day and to make the most of this opportunity because we're reminding ourselves, who are we working with? Who gave this to us? HaKadosh Baruch Hu himself. Ato. Again, we're, leave, we're specifically using Ato is very personal. HaKadosh Baruch Hu himself, the Chavayda of Atzma, created us, gave us everything that we have and everything that we need. To be able to fulfill our mission on this world in the best in the best fashion so that's this bro after uh, after this bro comes now what is this all about what do you say josh since since, since when are we making brachas on on uh, i don't 
no, no. Tyre? And I'm learning, you ever say? I'll make a bracha on a cup of water, make a bracha on some food, a bracha on seeing, uh, seeing a rainbow. What's the bracha on learning Tyre? What do you think? To acknowledge that it's a privilege. Okay. Maybe to some extent. Some kind of awareness. Mm hmm. That's right, you know, awareness of every bracha that we say makes us think and aware of what it is that we have. So what is, what is it? What is the Torah? Right? In, in many parts of the world, the Torah is referred to as, a, as a, just another uh, chokhmah, another wisdom, another uh, philosophy, and I don't know, depends where you go. You know, the people of the book. It's a book. Nothing more, nothing less. I don't know, you read a book, you make a bracha. What do you think? What do you think? I think that... And by the way, if anyone's watching this, also think. What do you, what do you, uh, what do you think? Whether you say to me what you think or not, but it's important to think. What do you say? I think that it's important to appreciate that Hashem gave us the Torah. So every day we have to appreciate that we can get the Torah as if it's like, as if you're in Matan Torah. True, 100%. So we have a bracha by, by uh, Berches Kriyashma. We also it's a time to, to think and to, and to introspect. But this is a this is also in the way it's a birchas It's a it's a bracha that we make on on the mit, on the mitzvah of learning Torah, which from the from the text of the bracha we can understand what is the mitzvah of learning Torah, right? In your opinion, what 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 is uh, what is the mitzvah of learning Torah? Um, understanding Hashem. Okay. Yeah, I mean it's it's Dvar Hashem. It's the word of God, so we want to understand it. When it's Yisrael v'Raisa v'Kutsh B'Rich B'Chadu, we're all it's one entity. Hashem called Yisrael in the Torah right here. What is the mitzvah of? Of learning Torah. This bracha we're making, we say, Asher Kiddushonu B'Mitzvah Yisav Etzivon. It's a mitzvah, I say, the study of Torah, the learning, is, is a positive commandment of the Torah. Right? Um, we learn it from, from, um, from Sukkim and Parshas Dvarim. So it's a mitzvah, it's a commandment to learn Torah. So we say, Asher Kedushonu B'mitzvah Yisav V'tzivonu Lasek B'divrei Torah. So, what is this mitzvah all about? So let's understand this. What does it mean the word la To be busy. To be busy with. Or to well. To. Uh, to well in it. But it's more bi- is, is, uh, This is what I'm busy with. This is my everything. This is my life. This is my constant occupation. So it's like busy? It's like asuk? Asuk, yeah. Busy with. Mm-hmm. Busy with. I would say it's more like an immersion. Oh, that is a wonderful word. To immerse yourself in it. To immerse yourself in it. So let's understand here. Right? And it's primarily... It's fresh. It's half healthy. So, I mean, in the morning we make them as I was. As far as I'm not sure what you do. Some of them make them mighty, some of them make them as I was. It's fresh, fresh. So it's a shame I don't let it get cold. Um... Last week we did break Torah. So it's interesting that this bracha was also instituted primarily on the Gemara. Primarily on the Gemara. Torah Shabbat So why? What is the Gemara? The Gemara is 
taking the Pesukim and the Torah, taking and building on that and going back and forth and a discussion. It's alive, it's teeming, it's, it's, uh, it's not, it's, there's a lot going on in the Gemara. I remember in seventh grade, my Rebbe, he, he, um, and in, a, in one of his attempts, he had different tactics in helping us understand and helping us remember. And one time he made us play out the Gemara. Play it out. There's a discussion happening. This is not just a story. This is real. So one person, one boy was Abaye, one boy was Rav, and they, it was because it was also a way to review. So, with a very creative way. Because it wasn't just because you're, you're reviewing what you learned. You're actually, you, each one, it's like, you, each one's got to know the script because he's a buyer, he's rover. You have to know each other's opinions very well. And it was going back and forth. It was gorgeous. I was 12 years old at the time and it made an everlasting impression on me. That's what terror is. Terror is alive. Terror is real. Terror is actual. It's, it's something that, that's pre relevant in every step of our lives and every, every day to day life. But Many times from the, from the bracha that we make in the mitzvah, we get a, a, an idea of what the soul of the mitzvah is. And, and here, the mitzvah is, it's not just to learn and to study. There's no bracha, lil moid divrei Torah, to learn the words of the Torah. Rather, la soik bedivrei Torah, because Torah is something much deeper and much higher. And if we want to succeed, we've got to make it ours. We've got to make it, we gotta, this has got to be the focus. Because it's not just a study, it's a life. And that's the bracha that we make. Once we realize what this is, that this is an ASIC, this is something big, this is a whole deal. This is something that, that it's not just a part of life, it's life itself. Why? Because who's it coming from? Alekim Chaim, Diver Alekim Chaim, these are the words of the living God. Every time we learn Torah, it says it's a. Uh, you could call a, a mini Maimed Arsina. But the Baruch Hu is, is giving us and giving us the ability to understand the Torah. And whenever we understand something, we should know that it's we because Torah is re, it's really a godly wisdom. And whatever we understand in Torah is a God-given gift that the Baruch Hu is giving after our toil, after we put an effort, then we get it as a gift. Just like Moshe Rabbeinu, that's what happened when he went out to get the Torah. Meaning, if Torah is to last, if Torah is to, it, it, it's not just the reading a text. It's specifically, we're commanded to immerse ourselves in it. That's a great word. To really immerse ourselves and to live it. That's, you know, Chaim Nobles, the who just passed away, as I mentioned earlier. He was a, I, I witnessed it myself. I mean, he, he was a working man, he, uh, but he was a huge scholar. But it wasn't just a scholar, it was his life. That's what he lived, that's what he breathed, when he walked, when he talked, when he ate, when he got, wherever he was. That was, and it's not just, it, he, if you were to see him, and I, I watched him on many occasions, I listened to him say, you know, speak out, the very Torah, and, and uh, he, he, truthfully, really, with every fiber of his being, enjoyed it so much. He was like in the seventh heaven, he loved because he would think and he would, you know, bring up novel ideas and, and deep and understanding. And he lived it, he connected to it, he, he, he formed a relationship. He enjoyed it, that's what gave him his, that's what gave him his strength. We were privileged to, to, to see many great people. Rabbi Shmuel Birnbaum, Zechariah Lebracha, the Rashiv of the Mir. Where I'm privileged to be a part of for over 20 years. And I was, I, I was lucky to see him. To see him, to watch him in action. So people that, their everything, their physical health was influenced by their learning. That's what it did. Really, I mean, we saw this. This is... Um, I, I remember this. I remember when even when he was very, very weak at the end of his life, when he started to learn, it was as if he wasn't sick. When he came to Dalin, it was as if he, he, he pushed himself. But it was something that he... he with Shmuel Burma, it was a very interesting story. Uh, uh, Finding over 40 years ago, he had a very bad heart attack. 
And he would he would have a crazy schedule. He would learn eighteen. He would be up for eighteen hours a day. He would be learning eighteen hours a day. Learning, teaching, and yeshiva. Would tell me that was his whole everything, his life. And his doctor told him when he had his heart attack, he said, "You know, I think it's time. You know, you need to take it easy a little bit. And you ha you have to take a break from from learning." So he looks at the doctor and he says, "Doctor." Have you ever made a mistake in your career? And the doctor very brazenly said, No, I didn't. So, different phase of Shmuel, he said, Doctor, this is your first one. To his face. And it wasn't just, you know, a martyr speech. It wasn't just, a, you know, to impress anybody. This was him. This is what kept him. This is what kept him, you know, throughout the warriors and throughout. This is everything because that's, he met. I, and I, I look at these people myself and I sometimes envy them and I aspire when will I get there myself such a close intimate relationship and attachment to the Torah it's a whole different level of living it really it, the quality of life is so is, is, is you know and, and you know I'm lucky to have seen it to have what to aspire to it's a different quality of life it's a, it's a different life it's a different approach to, to uh, of even even what's called in the world observing Judaism, observing Torah. It takes it to a whole different level because you're not you're not anymore observing. This is this is real. So that's the last sake with different Torah and the Stipler and the Shmuel. Many the Gedolim have expressed this is not just the Berachas Hamitzvahs. They enjoyed learning so much. So this is a bracha sanen, and this is a bracha like we make on a good piece of steak. Because that's what Torah is all about. So then we come to bracha Torah is three parts. Then we ask the har of Hashem Aleikem, Hashem, please make the words of your Torah sweet. We're very familiar. It's not always easy to learn. Not always necessarily so pleasant. We don't always understand everything. We have to work hard to understand. And something we have questions and, and we ask Hashem, please help us see the sweetness. Help us feel the sweetness in every part of it, whether it's understanding, whether it's even not understanding. But we should feel. We should enjoy us, and we ask for ourselves and our descendants. That. that Enjoyment and that attachment and that realization, the feeling of that this is something beautiful and, and, and incredible, should stay with us all the time. We should all, on all of us, our, us and our descendants, should always be. That we should, us and our and our future generation should never stop to realize who you are. We should never forget about you. The loim they say, we should always be from those that are learning Torah not, and learning it as your Torah, meaning not as just another wisdom, not as a study, not as another topic, but lishma for the sake of Torah, for really to be attach ourselves to it. Life is a different life when, when we're attached, when we're connected. It's, it's um, when, you, when you when you taste that, you don't need anything else, really. I was talking to a, a boy uh, two weeks ago, and he was describing to me how there's this one, there was this one piece of, of the modern, of, 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 I think it was a Masha, one of the commentaries that he was just, he couldn't get. And he was working so hard, and he was so hard, and he was putting an effort, and putting an effort, and finally he got it. And he was eating actually a good sandwich, and we were having lunch together. He and this guy, he knows, he knows, what, he knows what a good sandwich is. With some you know, good schnitzel and good sauces. And, uh, this was, he knows how to live it up. And he's like, this was something. This When I understood this, Masha, when I understood this piece, ah, nothing can compare to that. It's incredible. That's a taste that you hold on to, that even when it gets a little harder, you don't let go. It keeps you going. And then we come to the brach of. of uh, Shabbat, where we proclaim, we thank Hashem for choosing us and giving us the Torah. Once we realize what this is, we remind, we were, every time we say Rechastar again, we're not just saying the words, we're thinking. It's very, every, 
we, we spoke before, how important it is to think and concentrate. So when we're saying this Berachas Torah, we're thinking about the Torah, we're thinking about Ma'am and Hasina, we're thinking about how we got the Torah. Why we got the Torah? Because the Kodesh who chose us from everyone else to give us this beautiful gift that no one else has. The rest of the world doesn't have this Torah. Maybe they think they can study, but they don't have the Torah the way we have it. We say, ah, Kodesh Baruch Hu, thank you so much for giving this to us. Asher Bachar Bonavik, you chose us, you chose us. You chose us means you gave us a responsibility. Kodesh Baruch Hu, thank you, we're so appreciative. We're not going to fail you. We're going to make you proud. And then, this is a very, very, I think, uh, the way I, this is my understanding of it. There's, there's a halacha that when we make a bracha on mitzvahs, right, for example, lulav and esrug, right? You take, right, we, hold, we hold the lulav the esrug upside down, Right, because when it's upside down, we're not necessarily we're not we're not uh, according to most opinions, we're not we haven't fulfilled the mitzvah because it has to be the way it grows. So, being that the bracha is supposed to be said before we do the mitzvah, and right after the bracha is when we do the, we go straight in without any breaks, without any interruptions, go straight into doing the mitzvah. So that's why we we do the we fl- we flip it, we have it upside down by the bracha, and then we flip it right side up. But the idea is that the mitzvah should be done without any sort of interruption right away. So Torah is no different. We just made a bracha on the Torah, on this, on this commandment that we have and thanking Hashem for giving us this commandment to learn Torah, to get to know Him, as you mentioned very nice, very beautifully. Because the Torah is Hashem. Because the Torah is it's all one entity. Hashem, Kali, Yisrael, and the Torah. And the world was created with the Torah. Kodesh says, a of so to speak, looked into the Torah and created the world. The nature of the world is based on the Torah. So right away after that, we right away we say we say a, a psukim from Torah Shabbat and a part of Torah Shabbat Peh, which is the Mishnah Elu Dvarim. We say Yivarecha Hashem Yishmarecha. Those took him in Pashas Nase. And then we say, we say two Mishnahs, a Brysa and a Mishnah from um, uh, Peya. It's a Mishnah, it's a Mishnah in Peya. Why? Again, for love of Elasios and not to waste any time. We just gave a beautiful speech. HaKadosh Baruch Hu, thank you so much for giving us the Torah. And wow, we were realized, we were giving ourselves a speech of Eisek Torah, the Torah is a life and we have to be involved and immersed. Very nice, my friend. Now what? Get down to business. To talk very, to talk is very easy. To give nice speeches is very nice. But everything's got to end up. Don't waste any time. Dive into it, even if it's a little. Don't wait to say it's interesting, because we we're not giving a whole uh, lecture. So we're saying a small part of the... Two. It's a few psukim, a few mishnah. Many, many times we think, oh, uh, yeah, of course I'm going to learn, but I'm going to wait until I have an hour, two hours, and I'm going to learn. <clears throat> but today I'm very busy. So that goes one day and two days and until it never happens. So we right away, right away, we say a pasuk, we say a part, we give us a message. Don't push it off. Do a little, but do do a little, slow but steady. I had last week in the in the, in the parasha when it spoke about the mezbeach, when the mezbeach is... The altar wasn't allowed to have steps. So we, on Shabbos, we, we expounded on that a little bit, but one idea, or steps, you can jump, you can skip. When we're, Mizbech is where we brought carbon, when we, carbon is karev, to be close. We're trying to get close to Hashem. You want to get close? Don't wait for the jumps. Take, take maybe even small steps, measured steps, but steady, consistent. Don't, just, just go. And to end off, recently I heard something from Ramesh Weinberger Shlita that made a, a, a major impression on myself. We, spoke, we just spoke about, you know, the, the, the mitzvah of learning is not just to study, but to live it, to immerse yourself, go back and forth, to, to really be, live it. 
I don't remember the name of the Rebbe that he said the story about. But there was a Rebbe many years ago who there isn't much of his Torah that he said written down, recorded. There was one one of his chassidim ones I think took on himself to because on Shabbos and Yantav he couldn't write. He would listen, he would remember it, and he would transcribe it after Shabbos and after Yantav. I think after a year he brought him the manuscript. And it seemed that uh, okay, the Rebbe looked through it and wasn't too excited. So he said, what? What's missing? He says, you wrote everything word for word beautifully. But it's missing that, oy, it's missing that the feeling that I give over, that I gave over to, to the people. It's not, it's not just what I, what I said, it's how I said and what I was feeling and and giving over from my soul to them. And that's what's holding them up. That's what keeps them going. So Rabbi Weinberger said this about, and he said this about his father, but I believe it's something that we can apply to parents, grandparents that either came from the old country or you know, survived the war. His, his father actually was a survivor of uh, the camps. He was in Mauthausen, I believe. And he said like this, he says, I hope I'm quoting properly, he, um, he mentioned, he said, his father didn't necessarily teach him as much, teach him as much Torah, you know, in the book, for lack of a better word, as let's say he, he, he did for his child. His father came, you know, he didn't see his father much during the week, worked hard, it was, you know, they were rebuilding from the ashes. He said, but what did his father give? gave him, he gave him the eye, he gave him the feeling, he gave him the emotion. To feel Torah, to feel the way that's Hashem, to feel connected, to feel its importance, to feel that this is something, the world stands on this. It's something that can't necessarily be, be transmitted in words, but by, by, by the way he lived his life, he transmitted to his son, who today is leader of our time, Revelation Weinberger's leader, and others like him. Their very life spoke devotion to Hashem and His Torah. Their very life spoke the dedication. The, the mere fact that they lived through all of that, that they survived, and lived the life of Torah, and gave that over to their children, and worked so hard to, to build, and to build, and, and, and to, to rebuild, that taught something just by watching that and by, by being a part of that. That taught something that can't necessarily be transmitted in words. And we call it the oi. The oi. Ah! You, know, you could say, you, you could tell your mother in law thank you, and then you could tell her thank you for raising such a wonderful girl. Or you, know, you could tell your wife, you could tell, some, you could tell someone thank you. There's the thank you of thank you, just, you know. Thank you and get out of my life. But there's a thank you that expresses real appreciation. It's a world of a difference. There's a, the, and that's, I think, Lasik B'divri Torah. Don't just study it. Live it. Feel it. Connect to it. Don't be afraid to feel it. Sometimes we're afraid to feel. We're not sure how we're going to feel, so we're afraid. But Torah is good. Torah is amazing. Torah is the best. Torah is a gift from God, literally. When we make it, when we make this bracha, again, it's just it's a bracha in the beginning of the day to set the tone for the rest of the day, for the rest of our lives. And so we should all merit really to not just to study Torah, but to live Torah, to attach ourselves to Torah, attach ourselves to Hashem. That it should be a keshesh kayama, an eternal bond that should go stronger and stronger day by day. Thank you so much for your attention. Everyone have a wonderful evening. Thank you. Thank you.